Hello, so today we'll be looking at what the overall mass flux corresponding to the maximum molar diffusion flux at t equals 0.1 seconds and the molar diffusive flux being 2.78 moles divided by meters squared per second. Uh, over here I have listed some uh, assumptions. The first one being that both fluids are going to be considered ideal fluids. Um, and the second and third one being that the cross-sectional area and the temperature and pressure will be constant throughout the whole problem. And in the center here, I have created the diagram. And in the question, it stated that the capillary tube is 10 centimeters long. The tube is 10 centimeters long, so I denoted that all the way on the left-hand side is 0 centimeters, all the way on the right-hand side is 10 centimeters, and in the middle is 5 centimeters. And on the left hand side we have H2O, on the right hand side we have D2O, and at 5 centimeters we have the impermeable membrane that will be taken out at t equals 0.1 seconds so that both fluids can uh, mix together. And down here at the bottom I've denoted the gradient direction. So if, it's move if the gradient is moving from left to right, that's a positive z direction. So to get started this problem, we should take into consideration the total molar flux equation, which is N, N equals um, the molar diffusive flux plus the molar concentration times the average molar velocity, as said here. And so now looking at the second term where the molar concentration is multiplied by the average molar velocity. Um, we're able to conclude that this part of the equation equals zero because uh, the capillary tube, the tube is closed so that there's no change in velocity, um, meaning that the velocity is zero. Uh, so when we cancel this term out of the equation, of the molar flux equation, we're able to say that the the molar flux equals the molar diffusive flux. And when we say that, um, we're able to then say, for example, the molar flux of H2O is the molar diffusive flux. And in the problem, it's already stated that the molar diffusive flux is 2.78 moles divided by meters squared per second. Um, so we can now write that the molar flux of H2O equals 2.78 moles divided by meters squared times seconds. And now, considering D2O, we're able to also say that the sum of the molar diffusive flux is equal to zero. Uh, because if H2O is moving from left to right and D2O is moving from right to left, the molar diffusive flux has to cancel each other out, uh, headed towards equilibrium. So with this being said and deriving the total molar flux equation, we're going to say that the total, total molar flux for uh, D2O is going to be negative 2.78 moles divided by meters squared per second. And now since we have the molar fluxes for both D2 and H2O, um, we're able to now look at the mass flux. Uh, so starting off, we should probably write the mass and molar flux equations down. So the mass flux equation is lowercase ni equal to um, the mass concentration uh, times the velocity, or uh, average molar velocity. Um, and then the molar diffusive flux, or the molar, the molar flux equation is equal to the molar concentration times the average molar velocity, right here. Um, and so since we're looking for the mass flux, we can manipulate the molar uh, flux equation to solve for the average molar velocity. Uh, so let's do that, and we get the average molar velocity equals the molar flux divided by the molar concentration, right here. And so now we can make the relationship between the mass flux and molar flux equations. And we can say that um, the mass flux 
and I equals um, rho, which is the mass concentration times the molar flux divided by the molar concentration. And here we could also make a relationship saying that the mass concentration divided by the molar concentration gives you molecular weight because mass divided by uh, the concentration should give you molecular weight. And so when we write that out, we get rho divided by mass concentration. So the mass, um, mass concentration divided by molar concentration equals molecular weight. Now we can sub in this uh, this formula into our overall formula and get that the mass flux and I is equal to the molecular weight times the molar flux. And we already have the molar flux for both D2O and H2O as we already saw before, which is 2.78 and negative 2.78 respectively. Um, and so now we can just plug in that the molar flux, or the mass flux, and H2O is equal to the molecular weight, which is 18 grams per mole, times that by our um, molar diffusive flux, or molar flux, and get 2.78. 2.78 moles divided by meters squared per second. Once we do this math, which we do right now, um, we get that the mass flux of H2O is 50.04 um, grams divided by meters squared per second. And now we have to do the same thing for D2O. And this would be the same exact equation. So it would be the uh, mass flux of D2O is equal to 20 grams per mole times negative 2.78 moles divided by meters squared per second. Uh, and when we get, uh, when we multiply these two values, we get that the mass flux of D2O is equal to negative 55.6 grams divided by a meter squared per second. Now, we're not done yet because it said that the, the question said that it wants the overall mass flux. And to get the overall mass flux, we have to add the mass flux of H2O and D2O together. And so once we add the mass fluxes together, um, and H2O plus and D2O, that equals negative 5.56 uh, grams divided by meters squared per second. And what this essentially means is that uh, the mass flux is traveling from right to left because um, our value is negative. So and it make, can make sense too because the D2O is slightly heavier than H2O. So that is our final answer for question one. So for the second question, we're trying to find the order of magnitude estimate for the maximum driving force for diffusion at t equals 0 0.1 seconds. And we still keep the same exact assumptions as we had for question one, which are that both fluids are considered the ideal fluids, there's constant cross-sectional area, and there's constant temperature and pressure. So in order to start this problem, we have to take into consideration the molar diffusive flux equation, which is molar diffusive flux equals the negative molar concentration times the driving force, or times the inverse direct coefficient times the driving force.
And we can now solve for the driving force, considering that we're, that's what the problem is saying. So, the driving force is equal to the molar diffusive flux divided by the negative molar concentration times the inverse drag coefficient. And um, now, since we're dealing with ideal fluids, we can also say that the inverse drag coefficient is equal to the fixed diffusivity. And we're able to say that because the fixed diffusivity equation it states that um, it is the inverse drag coefficient times the thermodynamic matrix. And since we're dealing with ideal fluids, the thermodynamic matrix is in unity, meaning that it is equal to 1. So since uh, the fictivity equals the inverse drag coefficient, that means that the inverse drag coefficient equals uh, 10 to the negative 9 meters squared per second, since, again, we're dealing with ideal fluids. So we could say... The inverse drag coefficient equals 10 to the negative 9 meters squared per second. And now we have to consider the concentrations of both these fluids. And to find the concentration, we have to do, to find the total concentration, we have to do, um, we have to add both these concentrations up together and divide by two. So to find the concentration of water, we get uh, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times 1 mole divided by 0 0.018 kilograms, which gives us um, 55,555.6 uh, moles per meter cubed. And um, we're able to now find the concentration for D2O, which is going to be 1100 kilograms times 1 mole divided by 0 0.02 kilograms. And that gives us 55,000. moles per meter cubed. And now we want to add these up and divide by 2. So when we add these up, we get 110,556 um, and then divide by 2. The total concentration is going to be roughly 55,000. So 55,000 moles per meter cubed. So now we can go ahead and plug all of our information in. We know that the molar diffusive flux is 2.78 um, from the last problem, and we already found the total concentration, and we already know the inverse drag coefficient. So when we plug all of this information in, We get roughly that the drag, uh, the driving force is going to be roughly one tenth to the fourth, one over.